In this segment, I'd like to talk about some common treatments that may be given to people that have sustained more serious back injuries. And the first treatment has been used for low back pain since 1952. It's called an epidural steroid injection, or ESI. Doctors consider this an integral part of non-surgical treatment of lower back problems. It's a minimally invasive procedure where a doctor will inject a long-lasting corticosteroid and an anesthetic numbing agent into the epidural space of the spine. In the epidural space, well, this is the area between the dura or the protective covering of the spinal cord and the bony vertebrae. The goal of an ESI is to relieve pain. Another side benefit is to hopefully decrease the pressure on the nerve root so the patient will be able to participate in some rehabilitative exercise and stretching. Now, it's important to point out that these ESIs are not a cure. If there is pain relief, it's going to normally only be for a limited period of time. Well, what are the risks of having an epidural steroid injection? Well, anytime anyone is having an invasive medical procedure, there can be risk. And please understand an epidural steroid injection is invasive. Well, risk may include infection, nerve damage, excessive bleeding, or you could have what's called a dural puncture. Now, a dural puncture, let me explain this. This is a condition that occurs in approximately 1% of all epidurals. The epidural needle is inserted too far and it makes a small hole in the dura matter, which is the membrane which holds the fluid around the spinal cord. The needle doesn't damage the spinal cord, but the puncture can cause headaches because the fluid can leak out of the hole. The best way to treat this is with what's called a blood patch. The anesthetist will draw some blood from your arm and then inject your own blood through the epidural needle. And the injected blood will then form a clot over the hole to prevent more fluid from leaking. What happens if the epidurals don't work and your doctor recommends surgery? Well, I suggest you schedule an appointment with a doctor to discuss the proposed surgery in great, greater detail. And then ask the doctor the following. Describe what will be done in the procedure. What are the potential risks during the procedure? What are the potential risks during the recovery? What can I expect if the procedure and the recovery goes as planned? What are the potential risks in the event I do not have the procedure? Look, if you sustained a back injury from a car wreck or an injury on the job, uh, an accident on the job, remember, the most important consideration you should have is getting your health back and, and getting your health back as much as possible. Don't take the quick settlement the insurance company is going to dangle in front of you. Give us a call so we can protect your rights and fight to get you all the cash and benefits you deserve. Look, you have absolutely nothing to lose by calling us, but think of all you can lose if you don't.